everybody. Welcome to this Riverland Central moment. I'm Joella and today down here in the uh, rail yard, ready to share with you something from God. Last week you might remember I shared with you a prophecy that God had given to me and it says this, I want to pour my spirit out again upon all people need to remind you of this it's so good my sons and daughters will prophesy once more and I will release my blessings of all kinds from heaven to you I want to draw people to myself through mighty displays of my power drink deeply at my well draw deeply from my presence inhale and eat and take into yourselves all that I am so that I can pour myself out through you in this place I will release my fire that is so cool and we just we talked last week about how this is an opportunity to restart, to jump start our faith, jump start our relationship with God as we come out of this uh, season of self isolation into whatever is coming next. What's coming next for us as a church and in fact as a movement all across this land is a period of 21 days of prayer and fasting starting on Saturday the 1st of August, so the 1st to the 21st of August and this year this is a real great opportunity to do exactly what that prophecy says to drink deeply from the well of Jesus from draw deeply from his presence and to inhale and eat all that God is and really draw in to him when we read from Luke 4 about Jesus, it tells us that he had been baptized. Uh, it tells us that he'd heard those incredible words, this is my dearly loved son and I, he brings me great joy. And then the Holy Spirit led him out into the wilderness. And he led him out into the wilderness and, the, and Jesus followed the Spirit out into the wilderness for a period of 40 days. 40 days he had nothing to eat at all. And during that time, Satan came and tested him and Jesus responded to those tests with scripture, quotes from scripture and just cut him off at the knees and went on his way and and uh, God filled him afresh with the Holy Spirit and he came out from that experience after 40 days of hunger 40 days of isolation 40 days just spent relying on God's grace entirely uh, full of the Holy Spirit and then launched his public career with healing and preaching and teaching and raising people from the dead and doing miracles of great provision so many cool things but when we look at that, we see that those were the exercises that Jesus had to do to become the whole total spiritual person that he was. He had to do those exercises of following the Holy Spirit, even into places of trial, of going to places of, of solitariness, of, of solitude, of, of aloneness, the wilderness. The word there that's translated wilderness in my Bible uh, refers to somewhere where there is no one else, where you're totally alone. Uh, he had to do the, the learning of the Bible. He wasn't born with a, a particular memory chip in his brain that had the whole Word of God there for him. He had to learn it like the rest of us do. He had, it obviously had it memorized. He did it's not like he had a copy in his back pocket, but there he was in the wilderness able to quote from the scriptures and fight off the, the enemy with those things. So he had he had disciplined himself to learn the scriptures, to, to memorize the scriptures. You know, he was a guy, Jesus was a man who had trained himself or who'd been trained by God and by his family to do these um, exercises that helped him to grow into all he is and all he was. You know, it's the same with us. We, can, um, we, we, we can't just by willpower become spiritually mature. We can't just by sheer act of, of will grow spiritual muscles any more than we can grow physical muscles. You know, if I wanted to grow this bicep here, I can't just look at it and go, grow bicep, grow, you know? Like I can't just force it to grow any more than I can force my faith to grow or I can ca cause my heart to be soft. But I have to, to, if I want this muscle to grow, I need to do the exercises, I need to lift the weights, I need to do the stretches that are going to cause that muscle to grow and it's the same with us in our spiritual life and so during this period of 21 days of prayer and 21 days of fasting here's an opportunity to develop some new habits people say uh, experts say that 40 percent up to 40 percent of what we do each day is just have it it's what we do because we do because we do whether that be getting up in the morning and putting the kettle on or whether it be you know working a dressing gown on over our pajamas when we get up or whether it be where we sit for our lunch whether it be what we eat for our lunch these things are ruled by our habits and the habits that we make the habits that we we do each day shape our lives they they cause us to be the kinds of people that we are if it's my habit to always eat three chocolate bars after lunch that's going to leave to a particular kind of life for me, a particular kind of way of being. 
And these habits, the things that we do day by day, shape us and change us and they develop muscles in us or lack of muscles in us in particular ways. So my challenge is to this week, for those who follow Jesus, is to listen to the Spirit, listen to God telling you what habits to put down and what habits to pick up during this period of 21 days of prayer and fasting. So normally during prayer and fasting we'd say, well, you're picking up prayer, you're going to devote extra time to prayer and you're going to lay down food. Well, you can do that if you like, but there are many other habits, many other spiritual exercises that you could pick up and many other things that you could lay down also. So what I'm going to do today is to list off some of these things for you, these these habits, these ways of being, and, and uh, you can choose from that list or from what the Holy Spirit says to you to choose what you're going to do during this period of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is never about earning brownie points with God. It's never about proving how tough you are. It's never about losing weight. It's never about any of that. Prayer and fasting is always about becoming more like Jesus and growing in our relationship with God. You know, we want to, as Christians, as people who follow him, you know, we, we want to be like him. That's, that's the aim of the life of a Christian is to become like Christ, to allow Christ to so fully uh, inhabit us and flow through us that when people look at us, what they see is, is Jesus in the same way that Jesus was the uh, the image of the invisible God. You know, we want our lives to represent God to the world around us. And we can do that as we come, become more and more like Christ. To become more and more like Christ, we need to engage in the same kinds of spiritual exercises that, that Jesus engaged in. So following the Spirit even out into the wilderness, going out to quiet places, places where we can be alone with God, uh, fasting, uh, studying the Word of God, memorizing Scripture. You know, and we know that Jesus prayed. He often went out to lonely places or sometimes spent the whole night walking in the wilderness, walking in the hills, uh, just talking with God. And, you know, when he chose the disciples, he, he spent all night praying and uh, hearing from God as he made those choices and came back to reveal what God had showed him. You know, these same exercises that Jesus used to strengthen himself are the same ones that we can use too in um, 1 John 1 6 it says those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did if we want to be like Jesus we need to live our lives following the same sorts of habits the same sorts of patterns that Jesus did so let's pray and then I'm going to read for you a, a list of options a list of things you might like to choose to to um, some habits to pick up and some habits to put down. Don't think you can go picking up lots of habits that might be time consuming without putting something down. We don't get more hours in the day when we start following Christ. We just get the 24 like everybody else, but we've got to choose what we do with them. So let's pray and then we'll ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Oh Lord God, thank you that you're good. Thank you that you're faithful, thank you that you're righteous, thank you that you're wonderful and thank you that you are calling us to yourself, that you call us to drink deeply from you, that you call us to, to, to just soak in your presence and to absorb everything that you are. Thank you that you are calling us to yourself because you want to express yourself through us to the world around us. You want to use us to be those who carry miracles, who carry prophetic words, who carry hope, who minister to the poor and the, the lonely, to the uh, dispossessed, to the the, to the to the sick Lord God flow through us by your spirit and as we listen to you as we tune into you help us to hear what of these habits you would like us to pick up for this 21 days and what are these habits you would like us to put down thank you Jesus Thank you, Lord. Okay, here we go. So here are some of the things you might like to pick up for this 21 days. Of course, you might like to pick up a new pattern of prayer, a new habit of prayer, whether that's a different time of day or a different way of praying. There are prayer apps these days. Prayer Mate is one. There's another one that comes with a version Bible app, a way, a tool to help you to pray. So you might like to pick up one of those. You might like to pick up a new devotional or pick up one off the shelf that you haven't used for a long time and start a new devotional practice. You might like to sign up for a Bible reading plan. There are ones online nowadays with uh, with YouVersion and, and plenty of others. Um, or, or just devote yourself to, to reading a particular book of the Bible over and over and over for that 21 days. 
Speaking of which, you might like to join a life transformation group for the 21 days and then beyond as well. Uh, that, of course, will help you to continue to develop that habit of Bible reading and praying. You might like to start a pattern of walking day by day, listening to the Bible perhaps as you walk or, or praying as you walk. Maybe there's a, a neighbourhood you could walk around and prayer walk that neighbourhood every day for the 21 days. Maybe you will uh, take time each day to spend in worship using music. Just put some worship music on and spend that time worshipping God. Maybe that's a habit you would like to pick up for this 21 days. What about time in solitude? You know, you might head off sometime during this 21 days with a swag and just head down the river for a day or two on your own or, or maybe just for an afternoon, sit by the lake or the river and spend that time in silence and solitude, just pondering God, listening to God, praying. Maybe it's an act of serving that you're going to pick up through this 21 days, something perhaps in the church or in your family Family. Maybe doing the dishes every day for 21 days in your family. Maybe, uh, maybe you do that anyway. Maybe it's uh, you know mowing the lawns of your neighbours or, or taking biscuits to some of the people who live around you. Maybe there's some act of service that will help you to become more like Jesus as you take that on. Maybe it's coming to soak on a sudden. Wednesday night at 7.30 and just soaking in the presence of God for each of the, uh, the the Wednesday nights of the 21 days of prayer. Maybe it's a pattern of memorizing scripture that the Holy Spirit is asking you, prompting you to pick up a habit of doing that through this 21 days. There are countless others, but there's just a few. I pray the Spirit will have just stirred you for those. But if you're going to do that, you need to put something down as well. Of course, it might be food, as in a food fast. Um, it might be just particular foods. might be that you only have breakfast and din dinner and, and you skip the other meals and the other snacks of the day. Uh, maybe you're going to fast from social media or gaming or watching or reading the news. Maybe it's a, a hobby or an addiction that you're going to put down. You know, if it's a sin, if it's porn or gambling or violence or, you know, sexual sin or unforgiveness or rage, one of those things, put it down, but just don't pick it up again at the end of 21 days. Let that be gone forever in the name of Jesus. Maybe it's sport. Maybe you're going to abandon your sport team for the 21 days as a way of focusing your attention on Jesus and declaring to the world and to Jesus that he is more important to you than that thing. Maybe it's an unhealthy relationship. Who knows? Let the Holy Spirit speak to you and say, God, what do you want me to pick up? What do you want me to put down during this 21 days so that I might follow you better, so that I might become like Jesus, so that I might walk in closer relationship with you, Lord God, because that's the goal. That's the goal. That's absolutely the goal. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to do a restart, to do a reset. And Father, we just thank you that you're good, that you're faithful. And we know, Lord, your word tells us that when we take one step towards you, you come running towards us with open arms. And so, Father, I pray for these people today. Lord, whether they have followed you just for a moment or for many years, Lord, that you would speak to them and show them how they can grow in relationship with you. Father, for people who are brand new, who, who don't even yet follow you, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them. And as they continue to seek for you, as they continue to search for you, that you would reveal yourself to them and show them who you are and how much you love them. Lord God, you're good and we love you and we're looking forward to this 21 days of growing closer to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bye, everyone.